So you want to visit the UK. I mean, obviously, who wouldn't want to visit the UK? There's Big Ben, there's Buckingham Palace, there is the London Eye, Scotland, Wales. There is so much to see at the Cotswolds. Or you could be visiting family and friends, you could be giving an examination in the UK, or you could be applying for a visa to try and see if you can land a job in the UK. Now, whatever your reason is, unless you belong to a certain few countries, you will need a visa to enter the UK even as a tourist. And here's the thing, unless you apply the right way, the chances of your application getting rejected are really high. So that's what we're talking about today, how you can apply for the tourist visa, everything you need to know, the eligibility, the cost, and the step-by-step -step guide on how you can actually apply so that you can come visit the UK. With that, I'm Ashika and let's dive in. Now, depending on which country you belong to, you may not even need a visa. So let's quickly check whether you need a visa at all. But here's the thing. Either way, you will be allowed to live in the UK only for six months at max, unless you belong to very certain scenarios where it can be extended for a short duration. Countries like USA, Canada, Australia, Singapore and most European countries do not require you to apply for a visitor visa. Other countries like the UAE require an electronic visa waiver. And then there's most other countries which you would need to apply for a visitor visa. For example, if you're Indian, you would need a visitor visa. If you aren't sure if you need one, you can just visit this website and check out for yourself. I will leave this link below. Now, let's talk about how much it costs. A standard visitor visa for the UK costs £100 and the earliest you can apply is three months before the date of your travel. If you need a transit visa instead, like in case the UK is on the way to another place that you're going to, you can apply for a transit in the UK visitor visa and that costs you £64. If you need a visitor visa for academic reasons or for medical reasons, the cost is then £200. If you visit the UK regularly, you can choose to apply for a long-term standard visitor visa instead and the costs differ depending on the length of the visa. Now, if you apply for a standard visa, you should receive your application, whether it's an acceptance or a rejection, within eight weeks of applying, so that's really good. Now, if you apply for a super priority, on the other hand, the dates are a little different. If you apply for super priority, your decision will be made by the end of the next working day of your appointment, if the appointment's on a weekday, and within two working days of your appointment, if the appointment is on a weekend. You can also be contacted if your documents need to be verified, if you need an interview, or if you have exceptional circumstances, like if you have a criminal record. Now, something you should bear in mind is that when you come to the UK, there is an entire list of things you can and you cannot do, because I know there's a lot of people write to me saying they're planning on visiting the UK and they want to know if they can work while they're here, they want to know if they can look for jobs. It's really important you know what you can and can't do because if you are caught doing something you're not supposed to be doing, you'll probably be deported immediately and the next time you try and apply for a visa to come to the UK, it's going to be really, really difficult for you to get one. So please, please listen carefully. A visitor visa in the UK will allow you to stay in the UK for up to six months and it allows you to do a bunch of things like business, so you can attend conferences or give an interview or receive training. You can study courses that are up to six months or take an exam. You can get medical treatment. You can visit the sites of UK or be a tourist. You can take part in the school exchange program. You can volunteer to work at a registered charity for 30 days. And you can pass through the UK to another country. Here's what you absolutely cannot do. You cannot do paid or unpaid work for a UK company or as a self-employed person. You cannot marry or register a civil partnership or give notice of marriage or a civil partnership. For this, you would need to apply for a different visa, which is the marriage visitor visa. You also cannot live in the UK for long periods of time through frequent or successive visits. And finally, you cannot claim any public funds. Now, let's talk about the eligibility for this particular visa. What the UK is looking for evidence is that, first of all, you will go back to your country by the time your visa expires and your trip is done. The second thing is that you have enough money to sustain yourself while you are in the UK as a tourist. And the third thing, that you're not looking for alternate ways to try and stay in the UK and extend your visa or try and do something so that you can stay for longer periods of time. Basically. They want to make sure you're not looking at making the UK your home through this visa. 
Now, if you're planning on traveling to the UK either to give an exam or for medical reasons or to study or for academic purposes or if you're a scientist or a doctor, there's a lot more details that the government has gone into in terms of your eligibility. So what I will do is I will leave that link below and you can just go through it at your own pace because it's a lot to cover today. Now, I said this earlier that in most cases, the standard visitor visa is valid for six months, but there are certain circumstances where you can extend your visa. Now, let me warn you that this is only in certain exceptional circumstances and not everybody can extend their visa. So if you're going to visit family and friends, you really can't extend your visa. But there are a few examples. You can only apply to stay in the UK longer than six months if you're a patient receiving medical treatment. If you're an academic and you still meet the eligibility requirements, if you're a graduate retaking the professional and linguistic assessment board test or doing a clinical attachment. And if you fit any of these criteria, you would need to apply while you're still in the UK and before your current visa or permission expires. And you'd have to pay a fee of £1,000 regardless of your nationality. You would have to pay an extra £800 if you use the super priority service. Now I'm going to go into how you can apply step by step, but before that, let me just give you a heads up. A lot of people write in to me saying that they have gotten a visitor visa to come live in the UK and they want to know if this increases their chances of landing a job in the UK. Here's the thing. It's not necessarily the case. If you have an interview lined up, of course, it's great if you get that face to face interview. It always leaves uh, a more permanent impression on the interviewers versus a telephonic one but it doesn't increase your chances necessarily because here's the thing, you didn't have uh, the right to work while you were in your home country. Even if you come as a visitor to the UK, you still do not have the right to work. So that still means that the employer would need to sponsor your visa. So please understand that it doesn't necessarily largely increase your chances. So if it's difficult and if you're finding it financially challenging to come to the UK as a for a visit just to try and get that job you might want to rethink that because you might end up spending a lot of money and it might not translate but if you want to give it a shot please go ahead just remember you'll still need a visa you'll need to go back to your home country and apply for a work permit to work in the UK and then come back to the UK you can't convert your travel visa your visitor visa into a work visa while you're visiting the UK as a tourist now let's get into how to apply if you want to apply it's really simple first of all you can apply online and you can do this three months in advance like i already told you now the good thing is if you've never done this before and you need some help there is a service that the government offers i'll show you what it looks like you can either opt for help over the phone from an advisor or face-to-face -face help and you can get more information here and both of these services are paid services. Now I'll give you a quick demo on what all you need to fill and really don't think you need to opt for the paid service. It's a very, very simple procedure. So the first thing you want to do is head over to this page and click apply now. After that, it will ask you which language you prefer. I'm going to select English and after that, just click next. And I'm going to click India for this again because most of you who are watching this video will apply from India and I'm going to say I know which which location I will provide my biometrics from. After that, click start now. Something you should know is if you plan on staying in the UK for more than six months, you will have to take a TB test depending on which country you come from. After you click that, you will be asked to enter your email address and a password. Just remember to save the password because you will need this to sign in later. If you have another email address, click yes, otherwise just click no and move on and click save and continue. After this, enter your telephone number and this should ideally be the telephone number that you're currently using in your home country. Also mark whether it's a home or a business number. Next, they'll ask you if you have any other telephone numbers. You can click either yes or no and click save and continue. Then they'll ask you how they can contact you. I'm going to say text and telephone and then click save and continue. After this, you will have to enter your first name and your family name and just please ensure this is the same as it is on your passport. You'll also be asked if you have any other names in case you've changed your name. After that, they'll ask you what your gender is and what your relationship status is. Click save and continue. After this, fill out your address and whether they can contact you. Click yes or no. 
After this, you'll have to enter your passport details, which is the number where it's issued, date of issue, and the expiry date. You'll also be asked if you have an identity card. If you have one, you can click yes or else click no. They'll next ask you which country you belong to, where your nationality is in the country you were born in and place of birth. Fill in all of these details, rather simple. After this, they'll ask you if you've ever had any other nationalities, like if you've gotten a different nationality from your original one, you'd have to fill this in, click yes or no. Next, you'll be asked what your employment status is at this point. And you will be asked for proof depending on what you select over here. So please do not lie where this is concerned because you will have to provide proof. If you do select your employed, you will have to provide your employer's name, address and all their other details like their phone number and when you started working for them. If you click your self-employed, you will be asked what your job is and how much you earn from this job in a year. If you click that you are retired or you don't have a job, you will be asked if you have any other regular additional income, whether you have savings or whether you don't have any savings. Next, you'll be asked about the cost of your visit and how much money you plan on personally spending on your visit in the UK. If you do not know how to calculate this, it's really simple. What you do is you take the cost of an Airbnb or a hotel that you plan on living in. Even if it's not booked, it doesn't matter, obviously. Take the average cost per day and check the cost of how much food costs in the UK and how much transport costs then ca calculate using this how much you will cost uh, how much you'll spend per day that should give you an approximate amount and multiply that by the number of days you plan on staying so that will tell you how much money you are planning on spending in the UK and of course then keep a buffer over and above that next you will be asked how much money you spend on an average on every month and this is in your home country or whichever country you are coming from at the moment You'll also be asked in case someone is planning on paying for your visit. Now, this is important when you are traveling as a part of a business delegation, perhaps because your company will then cover a lot of your costs. Or if you're planning on traveling to meet either your friends or your family members. And in case they're covering part of the cost, you can definitely mention that over here. Next, you will be asked the intended day you plan on traveling to the UK. And they'll also ask you the day you plan on leaving the UK. Unlike in the case of the Schengen visa, you don't have to book your tickets for UK. You can wait until you get your visa to then book your tickets because very often there's a really long backlog. So it's not recommended that you book your tickets in advance. After this, they will ask you what your preference is for spoken languages. You can click English or any other depending on what you prefer. You'll also be asked what the reason for your visit is. Now, like I said earlier, depending on which of these you check, you, your cost for your visa will then change. So if you're traveling for tourism, just click tourism, or if you're traveling for any of the others, click on that and click save and continue. If you click tourist, you will be asked whether you are visiting as a tourist or visiting friends or visiting family. Click the appropriate answer and click save and continue. After this, if you have a partner, because I chose I was married, they will ask you details of your partner, whether they currently live with you, their nationality, and whether they will be traveling with you. After that, you will be asked if there are any people who are financially dependent on you. Next, you'll be asked to fill in details about your parents, your first parent and your second parent. You'll have to fill in both for your mother and father or father and father or mother and mother, whatever you have. You'll have to fill in details for both of them. You'll next be asked in case you have family who lives in the UK. If you don't have family, there's absolutely no problem. Please go ahead and click no. Don't think that your visa will get rejected because of this. that's not really the case. They just want to know if you have any family or not. You'll also be asked if you're traveling as a part of a travel group. Depending on the answer, click yes or no. If you're traveling with somebody else, that's something you'll be asked next. Click again yes or no. They'll also ask you if you have accommodation in the UK and if you have an address for where you're going to stay. Now, if you don't have any family or friends and you plan on staying in a hotel or an Airbnb, just click you don't have an address and you can give the details of where you plan on staying in the next step. So when you click next or save and continue, you can just fill in in this little box over here that you plan on staying in a hotel. And if you have an idea of where you want to stay or which hotel you want to stay, you can fill in those details. Or you can just write that you plan on staying in a hotel and give the address or location of where you're planning on living. Next, they will ask you if you have been to the UK in the past 10 years. Now, if you have been to the UK, you will be asked for dates of when you came to the UK. Your previous immigration stickers will help you from your passport determine when you came to the UK. 
You'll also be asked if you have traveled to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, USA, Switzerland, or the European Union in the past few years, the past 10 years to be precise. And depending on what your answer is, again, you will have to give dates of when you visited the UK or visited these other countries, sorry. You'll also be asked if you've traveled to any other countries which are in the EU or the EAA actually, but which are not the, e the UK, USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland. So depending on whether your answer is yes or no, fill in that and click yes and continue. Again, you'll have to give dates. Next, you'll be asked if you've ever been re refused a visa or asked to leave or deported or anything from the UK. So click yes or no. You'll be asked if you've ever breached UK immigration law, click yes or no. You'll be also asked if you've ever faced any convictions or penalties in the UK or in any other country. So depending on that, click whichever box is appropriate for you or click no, I have never had any of these and click save and continue. You'll be asked if you've been convicted of any war crimes, click yes or no and click the checkbox. I have read all the information. You'll be asked if you are part of any terror activity groups or organizations. So click the appropriate boxes over here and again checkbox at the bottom which says I have read all the details. Then they'll ask you if you've been a part of any extremist organizations. Again, repeat the same process as earlier. Then they'll ask you if you are a person of good character, which means if you have undertaken paid or unpaid activities on behalf of a non-UK government which is known to be dangerous. So again, read all of the questions and click yes or no and click save and continue. They'll next ask you about your employment history, whether you've worked for any of these organizations that have been mentioned over here and click save and continue. Next, they'll ask you if you have any additional information that you want to mention that you haven't been asked as a part of the form until now. So if you have any circumstances that you think the government should know about to help you with your visa, please mention it here or you can just click save and continue and move on. After this, they will show you all of your previous answers that you have filled in. I request you to go through these very carefully and ensure that you haven't made any mistakes because once you submit your application, it's really, really difficult to make any changes. So go through this whole thing carefully and ensure that there are no mistakes. Next, they'll tell you what mandatory documents you will need to provide as a part of your application. In my case, it would be the passport and I would also need to show evidence of funds, which I had mentioned depending on my job. So click on the boxes and read the details of what they expect you to provide so that you are 100% sure of what is required of you because you will have to provide all of this documentation and click save and continue. And then you have the declaration where they will tell you what you cannot do in the UK and what's going to happen if you do any of these things. So please read this really, really carefully, especially the point which says you will not be allowed to work in the UK. Once you're done reading this, click I confirm I understand and click save and continue. And then you will be asked to sign one more declaration to ensure that you have read all of the details and you understand everything and that you are submitting this either on your behalf or on somebody else's behalf. Click I accept the above. And after this, it's really simple. All you need to do is make the payment for your visa. So pay for whatever category you belong to, finish the payment. And then they'll tell you if there are any further actions that are required on your part. And that's it. That's really simple. You will be informed whether you need to have a face to face interview or not. That's it. You're ready. You have already submitted everything or you know everything you need to know to submit your application. That's it. Now, here's the thing. If you plan on visiting the UK, you are most definitely going to want to visit London. And what better way is there to see London than through a hop on hop off? Now, if you have no idea what a hop on hop off is or if I'm talking about hip hop like my in-laws think, I suggest you watch this video.